sometimes will still walk up to me and say, hey, aren't you the little boy in Candyman? And I was like, yeah, that was me. I was Jake. <laughs> guy and I played Jake, the one who gave the tour of the of Cabrini Green to uh, Virginia Madison. I kind of fell into it with Boys in the Hood. Uh, my aunt and I both were in an acting class at Marley Gibbs Crossroads in Lamarck Park. Uh, she was doing a Raising His Son for her class doing a scene. She asked me, or rather I kind of was like, I, I don't mind being in the scene. Like, I think it was a scene per partner asked me, hey, you want to be in our scene? I'm like, yeah, cool. Just so happens John Singleton, posing as a student, kind of incognito casting for Boys in the Hood was in the class. He saw me, wanted me for the film for a larger role. I ended up playing a smaller role that got cut from the film, but that was our, that's kind of my start to the business. And then I think I did a small part on In Living Color, and the next big thing was Candyman. In there. Candyman's in there? I put Charlie face up. A boy got killed there. Who was he? I ain't sure. Charlie told me he was weird. It was a lot of kids that auditioned for Candyman. And I remember auditioning a couple times. But the thing that stands out was the day I got the role. So the day I got the role, <clears throat> You know, we're walking out of the audition. We're walking to the car and unorthodox. Here comes Virginia Madsen. You got the part. You got it. You know, you got the role. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, cool. And that's something that doesn't happen. Listen, I just wanted to thank you for saving my life. You said it was our secret. You lied. It still is, Jake. You wouldn't have to go to court. Schooling was like this. You do three hours a day schooling, and if they're going to work you a little longer, then we might bank some hours. So we might bank another three hours or bank another couple of hours. Um, but that's basically what the schooling on the set was. And I still only had a certain amount of hours that I could work as a child. Like one night was a long night. The bonfire. <laughs> That was a long night. Matter of fact, they came, tried to get me and I was asleep in the trailer. Like it was just a really long night and they had a stand in, I think for one of the parts in that scene, kind of far away shot. You wouldn't know if it was me or the stand in. My aunt said she knows, I still didn't see it, but she's like, I know that wasn't you. And I'm like, okay, okay, it wasn't me. But um, yeah, so it was, it was fun. It was long hours um, and I loved it. <laughs> Candyman. You know, later I watched documentaries on Cabrini Green, and I was like, it was serious. They had snipers on the roof, you know, shooting enemies. It was a battle zone. Oh, baby. Which way you go? Just going inside. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Come up in here. Excuse me, y'all, they come up in here. Just going up to see if I'm So are you not the police? Well, first of all, I didn't know it was dangerous. All I knew was there was a lot of police around, there's a lot of police on the set, and I'm thinking, okay, this is just security. This is just, you know, because it was my first, I, I was on a set of Boys in the Hood, but this was my second time being on, on location and being out um, in the elements of the community. And dealing with, I didn't know. I mean, I really didn't know. I knew there were police everywhere. Um, later, I found out some incidents that may have happened or, you know, Somebody was too loud with uh, one of the locals in the community. They didn't like that. There was some confrontation. This is stuff I found out later. I, I, I you know, as a kid, I'm just going, hey, let, let me go to the trailer over here. And my aunt's like, my shadow. Oh, you go, I go. Where you go, I go. Okay. <laughs>
God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Helen. It was a big graveyard and I had to be too far away from her. And she was like, she went over the wardrobe and was like, well, you just got to put me in this thing <laughs> because he's not going to be way yonder. And I know. So that's how she ended up going to wardrobe and they put some wardrobe on her and they put her in the scene. And she was standing right behind me in the scene, which I think is one of the coolest scenes of the movie. Because here you have baby has come back, Helen dies, but the baby is back. So the community shows support for Helen. And then the classic thing is me dropping the hook in the ground. I think that was one of the coolest shots in the movie where the camera is looking up and you just see me. Drop it. And then it was so smooth because I dropped the hook about face. We're out. We ain't thinking about y'all. We're here for Helen. We ain't thinking about y'all. We're here for Helen. Deuces. Working with Virginia. I remember we were shooting a scene uh, when we're coming out of the apartment building after I just told her that, you know, Anne Marie ain't in. She said you'd be back, all that. So when I just told her that we could walk out and it was cold, the, the exterior part where we're coming out, we're in Chicago and it's freezing cold. And I, I think in between takes, she kind of wrapped around me and held on me, you know, wrapped a coat and kept me warm. And so she was very, very nice to me. I, I love working with Virginia. Another scene, I walk in the bathroom and she just got beat up by the fake candy man. And that, they started calling me One Take Jake because it was like they needed this one scene. They just needed me to walk in and kind of look, and then that was it. And it was One Take Jake on the set. I got it first time. They were, one Take Jake. He got it. I was like, all right. <laughs> Tony Todd, of course, I wasn't working directly with him, but I did get to meet him, and, and he was very nice. Everybody was really nice. Uh, Vanessa Williams. My aunt just told me today that, she came by the uh, hotel room and we all went to eat or something. We went to go do something. So she was very, very nice to me. You know, I love working with her and the director. I love working with him. Yeah, it was it was not a hard guy to work with, you know, uh, from what I remember. Um, it communicated very well what he wanted and, and I gave it to him. I ain't scared of nobody. But you're crazy walking here on your own. It ain't safe around here. Yeah, I know. Well, being from Dayton, Ohio, small little town in Ohio, and just going to California where my aunt was, she was already pursuing her acting career. And she put to the side schooling, put to the side her acting career, and totally focused on me. And everybody in the family was happy. I was not watching horror movies quite yet. I, wasn't, I was not into horror movies at all, but it was like I wanted to be a part of this film. I met the Candyman. I met, you know, I saw the layer. I knew, okay, this is fake. This is make believe. Yet, I was scared to watch the movie. It was, um, it was the music. The music set the scene for the movie, and I was like, I want no part of this. <laughs> So during the Castle King screening, um, you know, I'm thinking I'm just going to be able to close my eyes and, you know, but that music came on and I said, I'm out of here. You know, I gave my little check out like, okay, somebody come get me when my part comes. And I think I probably waited to see my name <laughs> in the opening credits. But besides that, I was out of there. So one of the producers stood by the door and would let me in when my part would come in. And that was my first time watching part of the movie and I think you know later when it came out in the theaters I had a little girl I liked on my block and you know my aunt took us to the movie theater and we saw it because everybody wanted to see Candyman because I was in it you know uh, but I think I didn't watch the complete without closing my eyes it was a while as a matter of fact it was to the extent I did not want to sleep by myself for about three months I slept with my aunt and I didn't want to go to the bathroom by myself I, I it was serious. It was, I was really scared of the candy man. So quite, I always tell that story. I was, I had to sleep with my heart because I did not want, I was like, look, candy man going to get me for real. <laughs> you read something in the script. It's not like seeing it in a movie. 
It's like, okay, this person gets killed, okay, and you know, this happens, but it's not the same as when they put that music in there. <laughs> and you know, okay, something's like when um, they had the music, when um, her husband, and then he comes home and he jumps out and like dives on the, on the bed. Okay, I jumped out my skin. And I'm like, why did they have to put that, the music right there? Because it makes you think, okay, Candyman's about to come, something's back to happen, and it's just him jumping in the bed, surprising her. So, yeah, that music was, I think, key to a, a lot of the mood of the movie. It wasn't until the social media that I really saw that this was a cult following. You have those diehard Candyman fans. I, re I was in Atlanta and moving into an apartment and I was just walking in the parking lot at the apartment and this guy comes out of me out the blue. Hey, I know you from somewhere. And I'm thinking he's gonna say baby boy because at this time, even up to the present, most people, they know me from John Singleton's baby boy. But he said, no, you were in Candyman. And I was like, really? yeah, that was me, like, okay. But you know, I get that here and there, that you were in Candyman. And then on the social media, um, you know, I have, fans new fans that you know they're big horror movies they love horror movies if you love horror movies you love Candyman. horror and candy man are like hand in hand it's a classic so i have those fans that they will send me you know happy birthday wishes and and put candy you know tony todd and you know put everybody in like a collage and have me as jake and it's happy birthday and it's really cool i i even had um an incident where a fan from prison had mail my picture somehow printed out a copy and they wanted an autograph that was a little eerie they wanted an autograph it was like how did you get my address i live in the middle of the country now like really how did you find me my aunt was like okay disconnect the address from all your everything like she was like ah, I'm, <laughs> she was like no but yes so candy man definitely has a lot of fans and they all know me, and they find a way to reach me via social media, Instagram and Facebook. I, I worked a lot during the 90s, which was right after Candyman, and I can't say, oh, I got this role because of Candyman, but Candyman was the spark that lit the fire that um, really had me going. You know, I was getting the auditions. I might have gotten the auditions because of the Candyman on my resume. Um, people knew me from Candyman. Casting directors knew me from Candyman. So that was definitely, you know, a part of the road to success in my career I was going. Yeah.